Hey everybody, welcome back to Elitter Book Club. I am Matt. I'm John. And this is going to be our uh, review of the entire Mandalorian. Season one. Season, yeah. Assuming they bring it back. No, they're not. Oh, well, then it changes my opinion of it <laughs> completely. Uh, yeah, no, it's already renewed for a second season. Yeah, because it's Disney and they do what they want. That's true. But, uh, so, what do you think? Uh, obviously, you're, you sound a little animosity towards No, it, no, so. I have animosity towards Disney in general. So uh, that's, okay. that's a whole other thing. This was a pretty decent show. Yeah, um, yeah, it was good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I really actually did enjoy uh, this show quite a bit. Um, and if you're enjoying this show, like and subscribe to the stuff. Uh, but <laughs> that's real subtle, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? Right? I would probably cut a lot of this. Uh, yeah. So overall, the the season was really good. You kind of mentioned uh, before we got on camera how much there, and there was there was a lot of wasted episodes. Yeah, that, um, that's my real hesitation with this show. Is yeah, that there was not enough story. Mm-hmm. For this to be an eight episode arc, yeah. Like, I mean, to me, if you're gonna only have eight episodes, you've got to model it after the ones that have like come before, right? Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. they do eight episodes, I mean, barring what people think of the last few seasons, yeah. I mean, every episode counts. I mean, you. Yeah. There's a lot of shows that have come out recently that do that model, but again, you you don't have very much room to work with as far as just kind of playing with the world and the characters like yeah. you've got to be able to tell story while introducing while having fun right. like every moment I mean, it doesn't have to be every moment you can have the occasional here and there moments or even a, a whole episode that doesn't really push this narrative forward you right. just get to know the characters better but i felt like even those moments in this series it just didn't f- like it wasn't that much fun to me like you know i I didn't really enjoy the world just to be in the world not i mean star wars yeah yeah, yeah. i mean just like that's my problem is don't rely too heavily on people's pre-notions of everything yeah right i mean you're you're saying like they make they spent a whole episode on tatooine and we learned pretty much nothing in that episode and that was by far the worst episode to me was that fifth episode yeah um and you didn't feel like you get garnered anything from the story uh, much at all. And the characters weren't really that interesting. Like yeah. the Mandalorian, of course, is interesting, and you're interested in the child that he has with him. Right. But then you have this random character mechanic who also plays babysitter for mm-hmm. no real apparent reason other than you don't want the kid wandering the dunes of Tatooine. Right. Yeah, I mean, look, I feel like... it. So far, it's just been us harkening on the show, or harping on the show. I think overall, I really did enjoy this. this yeah, yeah. This I mean, yeah, we picked out the worst episode. Now, yeah, the, yeah, I mean, yeah, you yeah. have some of the better ones. Like, oh, yeah. you had the last two episodes really gave us the juicy details. Yeah, they were and, really good. I, I thought the third episode was really and, good. Well, when like, you have Mandalorians in action, yeah, yeah, that, that was, was really cool. cool. And the action in this movie, I mean, I mean, yeah. this not this movie, this this TV series yeah. has been really on point. Right, and I felt like the production level was excellent. Uh, right. I mean, just obviously it is Disney, but I think. I think that might have been something that there was some some budget stuff that kept it kept us maybe doing a few more filler episodes if that makes sense you know what yeah I mean? like I and, think there was some things yeah. that they were trying to stay within a budget because they didn't know you know that's true yeah they didn't I mean? so we can kind of see where the next next season right. takes us to a certain degree uh, but I think that could have been some of the dictation of why it was between thirty and forty minutes long was budget um, as well. Um, I think that was a, a kind of a strike against it being that short. Um, yeah. especially if you're, but that being said, we kind of like what we're saying, like you, 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 you looked at it as maybe half of the, the episodes being more filler. I look at it as maybe like two being more yeah. fillers. Uh, but when you look at that, that it's an eight episode arc and 30 minute episodes, I mean, that's, that's, that's 25% of your season. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, it being, to me, that's being generous. Cause I mean, even like, I might give it three mm-hmm. fillers, but even so, like, to me, a filler is when you spend, you know, in this case, 20 to 25 minutes on stuff that's not related to narrative. Yeah. And then you maybe squeeze in a couple tidbits of the narrative in there. But, uh, you know, like the prison break one. The prison break one was fun, yeah, the like action mm-hmm. and stuff, but, like, you could have had characters in that, like, ensemble that pushed 
more into the backstory. Like, you gave a little bit of details, but it was that sort of, like, really vague details about the Mandalorian's backstory. Yeah. Like, oh my goodness, you remember that one time in that one place where we did this stuff together? Yeah. You yeah. were so crazy back then. Yeah. Wow, good times. Yeah, yeah That yeah. doesn't tell you anything. No, That doesn't it really doesn't. fill in the backstory. That just like, oh yeah, we knew he was a badass. He's yeah. a Mandalorian. But I think the I think the point of that episode, uh, for to be a little bit counter argument on that, is that I felt the point uh, the point of at least the character development in that episode. I'm not saying it was a big narrative yeah. push, but that was just kind of to show you, kind of like what you said. Well, why did he care? He was killing people. You know, he was killing people in earlier episodes. Why is he now caring? That he's not making sure not to kill these three people because what their main people, um, I think it was kind of hopefully you know I don't know if that's completely the thing but to kind of show his arc right. of showing okay well look where he was in the very beginning of the season being right. a very ruthless killer now he's met this child the child he's learned yeah. to develop and, and love and care more and I guess that's my real issue is that they're they're showing the the touchstone points of saying, oh, look where he is now, 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 they don't show the in-betweens that much, right? They yeah. aren't showing those moments that push him in a way to change his, right. his character. He seems to be the kind of person who doesn't want to kill unless he absolutely has to. Yeah. And has this sort of integrity, and so there's not really a whole lot they've done to push him into, like, growth. Mm -hmm. It's just really revealing who he is. That's been, like, the point of the series, and I'm get behind that but i just feel like there was a lot lacking yeah uh, as far as that goes and the development of the world like a lot of the side characters just didn't feel fully developed my main problem and so we'll, is, we'll the last, move. is the rise of skywalker yes that is always my main problem <laughs> but no the my main problem with this series isn't like the, those things can be tweaked yeah you know you can come back next season and really fill in more and and do better the thing I think they're going to have problems with, to me, in this season is, it, even in the last episode, it didn't feel like they've nailed down the tone of yeah. this show. I think like, it went back and forth a little bit it, on that. It bound, it, like, Westerns are a difficult genre to pull off anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a space Western, and so, like, are you going to do more comedic? Are you going to do more serious? I mean, you're trying to do both, but the nature of the balance between comedy, action, and serious... It, it really varied in a lot of the episodes. Like, some just felt really silly. Like, the first episode had this whole montage of him learning to ride this random alien cow yeah. horse thing. And I can see that as being more of a pilot. To yeah, a and that's fine. But even in the last episode, you had five minutes of red versus blue stormtroopers punching babies. Yeah, Taika Waititi, though. I mean, it was a funny <laughs> moment. No, don't get me wrong. I actually really liked that scene. Yeah, yeah, But, it, yeah. like, it really felt weird. I think it went on for about a minute or two too long. Maybe. Yeah, and that's, that's and what... It, and that's how what they it. ended that scene actually was good because you had IG coming in. Yeah. But, the, see, I think that that was another issue, and you kind of brought that up, is that IG, to me, was a, a cool character that he could have used another episode. Uh, kind of like right. what you were... They did a five-minute montage of him learning to walk again. And, and I think and if that would have been in place of maybe the fifth episode, where we didn't like the fifth episode very much at all, yeah. if they would have had another, you know, even half-plot episode, right. and it's kind of showing you a little bit based on that character, it kind of shows you a few of the things. Because one of our big complaints about the last episode, which... To me, the last episode was really good. I think they ended on a high note. I think it was cool to see the Black Saber, which I can go into detail about it a little bit later. But one thing that was really yeah. inconsistent on the uh, that episode was it felt like, like you said, the tone, it felt like they had to put so much plot in the last episode. Yeah. And, and it, it, they, they could have, if they right. spread out the plot a little bit more over the other episodes, right. it would have it would have been smoother. Right, and I felt like some of the things... One of the things that didn't work was that ending sacrifice of the IG character yeah. is that you didn't really care that much about him. Yeah. You I mean, I mean? Not, only, not only did you not really get to know him as a character, like, I mean, you have what, K2SO from right. Rogue One was like, oh my goodness, this is a really cool character. I really want to see this character make it. And right. to see him do his sacrifice move. Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> To see him do that, <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, you know, was actually like a really emotional scene. Yeah, and even though I felt it was a bit forced and rushed, seeing the 
spoiler alert, yeah. C-3PO moment that really wasn't a sacrifice but kind of was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That even kind of felt a little lackluster Yeah, yeah. comparatively, but it still had the buildup because you knew that character. Yeah. Whereas this was, he's a droid, IGs are not that rare. Like, they're kind of rare, Yeah. but there's more than one. Yeah. Right? And so that's the thing about this. I would not be surprised if we don't see another IG coming in next season. It's going to be an assassin droid again. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to be this assassin turned nursemaid droid. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I but, think if, if you would have even brought him in another episode towards the middle yeah. and, and had that... that Because one thing that they did well was they established... That how much he hated droids throughout the entire thing. Right. And then at the very end, the idea that, oh, well, now this droid is saving him or whatever. But it yeah. felt very, and you know, that he's sad he's going to die. But it felt, even though you established that thing about this character, you didn't establish his relationship so much with this particular droid. Right. And, and you again, had it in the first episode and the last two. Again, that's the thing. They don't show those moments that really push the character. Yeah. I mean, they had it with the IG unit saving him. Yeah. Right? And so that was his moment of growth. Right. That should have happened in a different part. That should have happened earlier somehow. Well, even like I said, even if it didn't happen earlier, if they would have brought in that IG character before the last two, right, and uh, and and, and, sh- and and had him more, had them have a lot more interactions, even though he's skeptical and doesn't like him, right. But you know, it's like, oh, I don't like you. I'm skeptical of you. And you you had that with two or three episodes before then, yeah. And then at the very end, it's like, no, you are good. You are saving me. And right, and you and have and a you're connection talking about to a guy story. who has a lifelong animos- animosity towards droids in right. like the m- span of three minutes suddenly switches. Right, and that yeah, like I said, that to me, to me, these things the, look the, again. Let let us go back because I, I when we we are so passionate about Star Wars that I think it sometimes comes off that we don't like Star Wars. Yeah, I'm going to wa- I'm going to yeah. keep watching Star Wars. Yeah, I'm gonna for keep sure. Watching all and stuff. I think that the Mandalorian I was a text this earlier to another friend. I think it was to me the best live action of any Star Wars other than Rogue One in this new Disney era. Yeah. Um, you know, so I mean, like uh, just the world. The, I thought the music was excellent. I thought the action was excellent. I do dig these characters. Right. I, uh, at least Mando, Mando, Baby Yoda has become like a phenomenon. I thought, you know, I thought he was super cute, super cool, a super awesome right. part of this. I think the building into the Mandalorian lore and the culture and just how cool they were was yeah. excellent. So we really are just kind of pointing out a lot of the things that bothered us about it, but yeah. there's so much to love and, here, and, to, and I yeah, did really and like it. To me, it's like what we've been complaining about is story process. Right. It's not really like the effect, like you said, all the other things that we, are great are great. Yeah. It's just that in the story process, you know, it's sort of like in this last episode, we met a new character who seems to know everything about these characters and who has like some kind of connection to the baby Yoda yeah, and, and so honestly, you, I didn't mind necessarily that. I didn't mind that because, coming in. It was just there was they no, didn't kill him. There was no foreshadowing, right? It yeah. was like, oh, you see him on this hologram, then all of a sudden the guy who's been the villain the whole time is dead two seconds later, and now he's in charge shooting up the place, mm-hmm. and you have this weird kind of standoff situation, which I'm really not even sure why the standoff situation existed. Yeah, that was another big complaint for me was that he could have just killed them and still chased after baby Yoda. Like, right. Why well, does he have to keep them alive? Yeah. That, that, that wasn't really hashed out properly Yeah, because, or you know, maybe it will be, but to me it's like, you're not going to do that in another season. That should have been something like there, there, there needed to be, he said, you can't trust me, but I want you alive for whatever my reason. self interest yeah. for my self interest. And at, at one point they had the baby Yoda and they were having them stand by for whatever the reason being, because yeah. they were afraid to interrupt the dude or something. And so it's like Mando came across saying, you know, if they had him, then we wouldn't be alive. But right. there there should have been another reason they were keeping them yeah. alive, and that should be should and, have become and, apparent. And my other thing, too, about that that whole situation, that scene, that was another convenient thing that happened, was the comlink thing, where he's talking 
to, uh, you know, I have spoken. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, the he's talking on a channel that the stormtroopers can hear, and so the stormtroopers chase after the dude, even though they didn't really say specifically where the ship was. Mm-hmm. He just says, get him back to the ship, and suddenly the stormtroopers knew which direction to go and to chase mm-hmm. after him. Like, either the people who write this don't know how communication lines work. Well, we don't know how the communication lines work in Star Wars. We could, we could say all I mean, I'm sorry, but like in every, it. never in Star Wars and any other live actions has there been this situation. Yeah. Where you're talking and all of a sudden everybody can hear you, right? It's never happened before. Like, set, do some foreshadowing is all I'm saying. Like, if you're going to have a device suddenly happen that hasn't happened before, foreshadow it somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, that's the point. Like, you, you have to build these things in. Otherwise, you look like you're making it up as you go along. Yeah. Like, I I'm, I believe that there's enough money and enough talent into the show that they're not just making it up as they go. No, and I think... But it, yeah, these I, kind of moments make it look like they are. And that's my problem with... Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Is it's, it looks like lazy storytelling in the sense that you suddenly have a really convenient plot device. Right. And and we, we could probably say that and, and there's going to be somebody... I mean, there's there's, there's going to be somebody in something saying, oh, well, no, 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 in this, in this thing, you know, in some things... Uh, they they have done this, but at the same time, uh, you have to look at a show and be consistent with them. You, you feel right, like right. congruent to a show. Like, okay, yeah, we're we're, you know, we're, we're we're done ripping on it. Here's yeah, let's let's take a couple minutes. Talk you know, about some of the good stuff. Talk about some of the good stuff. The effects, I really love practical effects. They've yeah. used they've used quite a bit of CG in this show too. Yeah, but I think they've really done well with the world building and some of the practical effects they've used. And I think that that's. Uh, Whereas some things have been a negative for budget, maybe like the time uh, and right. things like that. Some things I think have been a blessing with budget. Yeah. Because it's felt more like Star Wars. Because if you really look at the old Star Wars, the old Star Wars didn't have $100 million budgets or whatever they yeah. are now. Right. And, and we're so, talking about the pre specialized to like to an extent. Yeah. I mean, the majority of those movies. I'm talking are about still, the original Star Wars trilogy that's what I'm saying. in general. And, and they still didn't have a $100 million budget to go back and retouch it but anyways that's besides the point right anyway, there was right. mostly practical effects there yeah. it was it, it kind of was a it had a big budget and was special effects for their time but it was very um figure they're figuring things out and they made it work and it was a right. small somewhat world you know and it yeah. expanded as it went so i think that that's kind of been a problem with some of the prequels and even the sequel trilogy yeah. So much that oh, we have all the money, throw the kitchen sink at it, and they don't right. focus in on storytelling and character and, development. And I think, kind of to your point, the one of the other criticisms, I, I like that each episode is more or less contained in one really narrow geography. Yeah. Uh, I think they would have done better, like in the last three big movies and some of the other stuff, they, they know there's a big universe to play with, and so there's this really weird... Like, they go a lot of different places really quickly. Yeah. And light speed can only account for so much, right? There needs to be limits to the world. And so they've done pretty well in this series about keeping it, like, only on one planet or with the prison break, only with a certain ship. Yeah. And, you know, I think they've done well with that, and I prefer that. Like, if you're going to tell a 30-minute story, you don't need to be chasing things around the universe. Yeah, there's been a lot of just running from things. (laughs) <laughs> and that's yeah. Been, that's been a big problem with a lot of the sequel trilogy, and I think that that also lended us to learn more about the characters. Um, in, right. In this, you in box this, them in and right. you force and have, situations on and, them. Right? Yeah, and you had character. Yeah, you had character moments. Whereas I feel like the new episodes uh, or the sequel trilogy, uh, you had a. It almost has a very opposite problem, uh, but I I think one is a worse problem. So. Kind of spoilers for Rise of Skywalker a little bit in here too, and I'm, I'll probably have to put that up on the screen a little bit earlier. But I feel like the Rise of Skywalker was so much plot and not enough story, story, yeah. and characters. Whereas right. with this, I felt it was a lot of characters, but not enough plot. If that right, makes sense. yeah, they, you know they, I mean? they they, they kind of went in the opposite direction. That, it was like a, saying. that was a, you know they they uh, they, they off- kept the plot really minimal, right? And but 
when you're first learning... I still think this was done better, Yeah, yeah, by and the way. when you're first learning about characters, you need some of that plot to really know them in the different situations. And there's, like I said, I give it about half the season really did that well. Yeah. And, you know, that I'll give them moments in, other, in the other half that they did okay, but... Right, like I said, I, I feel like overall, I only saw one episode that I just didn't like. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, most of the episodes, I, I agreed that they didn't really push the full story along, and they kind of seemed like, you know, yeah, maybe you're just introducing some characters here, or you, maybe you didn't do any of that. I think the prison break scene uh, uh, is a very good example of that, um, is where, and honestly, the second episode somewhat was kind of like that too. Right. Um, but I enjoyed both of those episodes. Either way, and there, you know, there was a plot of the idea that you had, um, you know, you you found out Baby Yoda's force sensitive, but like none of us knew that, you know what I mean? Everybody right. knew, knows this kid's gonna be force sensitive. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know, like I I don't want to just kind of like I said keep harping on it. I think there was some really good stuff that they, right. they and, and they and they definitely set a really good foundation uh, for where they possibly yeah. could go and. Yeah, that's and so, so that's, their, that's where we take rhythm. away from because like it's really rare for a TV show to come out the gate and be where they're at in their sweet spot. A hundred percent. And that's you know so we're not holding any of this stuff against them. This is right. just like our initial thoughts, like what we're going. And that's why like I have a lot of hope for where they're going to go with it in the next season yeah. because of the people involved. And I think they've they've done some really good promising things. Yeah, and some groundwork. Yeah. And and like like you said, like so there's so many shows that the first couple of seasons aren't good at all. Right. Especially when you go to more like serious type shows because right. they're trying to find, you know, yeah. and sci-fi find, sci-fi yeah. is a difficult thing to do. There's a lot of shows that either don't make it through their first season or it takes two or three seasons before they find that rhythm right. that they need. And so that's that's what we're I'm Again, still going to be a fan of Star Wars forever. Yeah, and and, but, and, and I'm excited to see yeah. where this goes. I'm excited to see the Obi-Wan show. I think these type of Disney Plus shows have gave me so much more hope in Star Wars than any of the sequel stuff has. Um, and, and, yeah, as long as they keep it alive, it'll something will develop eventually. Like they'll, for sure. I mean, Disney is a company well-versed in how to tell good stories. Yeah, they, they are, and I think they're really good about finding the right people to, yeah. for the right job and that's why i mean it shows with their success even uh even though you, you might not agree with some of their practices right. okay uh, okay so yeah let's let's score this thing <laughs> all right all right um out of for, 10 for me out of 10 uh we haven't done tv shows yet we haven't except for the witcher yeah but i don't even know if we gave it a i don't think we gave it a score we just loved it that yeah, was, yeah, that yeah. was just love um yeah, yeah i'm gonna give this a six out of ten i mean okay. i i it's again it, part of it is just because the first season there's a lot of things lacking there, and it's all story to me. Like, the production's on point. The acting was all right. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, I'm not blaming the actors. The acting was decent. It was just the script writing, I thought. The dialogue was stale in some parts. Mm-hmm. But a lot of promise. So this first season, I'm giving it a six, but I'm hopeful for yeah. the next season. Okay, so, yeah, be sure to like and subscribe. Do, do all you, that do, stuff. Do, 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 do. And oh. my Stop number is... Uh, 7.5 and I have spoken. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is the correct score. All right. <laughs>